Hello friends, how are you? My name is Ari Therger and today I'm going to talk about the Norse concept of fate, known as weird and urlok. Weird is a term from Old English related to the Old Norse word hurdr, which has the same meaning. Hurdr literally means that which was and no longer is. It is the past form of the verb verda, to be, but it also means destiny. It is the name given to one of the Norns, along with Verdandi, what is or has been, and Skuld, what will or shall be, past, present and future. Hurdr is the sum of our acts, past choices and events that will give shape to our present, which in turn will determine other future presents, the unwritten future, that which has not yet come to pass. Our destiny is nothing more than our past. Everything we have done will have real consequences in our lives, the lives of others and on the world itself. And these acts, this series of decisions will have future consequences. We are the reflection of our own actions. Every decision we made, every choice, every word spoken and every path taken will have consequences and those same consequences will determine the outcome of our destiny. This is why Hurdr is both the past and the destiny. But there is always this idea that destiny is something fixed, something unaltered. The complexity of the Norse concept of fate goes beyond the mere simple idea that we can't do anything to alter the outcome of our destiny, because it's already written. Our fate is fixed and sealed. This is not entirely true, at least in the perception the Norse had of destiny. Our choices are limited by what is possible. Hurdr, destiny, is limited by the Urlok. The universe, the natural world, even ourselves and every living creature is restricted by the Urlog, and that is something nothing and no one can change. It is the past and the unchanging laws of nature, physics and biological laws. It is all that has ever been, the basis upon which we exist, the very thing that imposes limits to our existence. Urlog is the matter, the material existence of all things, the basis on which we can work, produce, create, live. There is freedom within our destiny, freedom in our choices and actions, but that freedom has limits. It is limited by our past actions and by our very nature and the circumstances we live in, the laws which go beyond our will and govern the universe in which we live. In other words, giving it a more practical and realistic view, just imagine that you are on a journey and you have to cross a portion of land from one point to the next. Your objective is to cross this land and you can do it in several ways. You can choose to cross the mountains, go through forests, swamps, you can follow the course of the river, swimming by boat or you can just walk and no need for shortcuts. You may not have a choice and you really have to follow a specific path or maybe all the previous choices are given to you and even some that aren't in plain sight. Circumstances are not always under your control. Think of the weather, the time of the day and other dangers out there preventing you from reaching your objective. But your choices, actions and decisions will define how easy or difficult your path can be and how long it will take you to reach your objective. To have a better understanding of this Norse concept of destiny, we also have to take in mind that to the Norse, the self was divided in many parts. Unlike the concept of the soul, 
in many monotheistic religions, which are more concerned with the afterlife rather than the reality we live in. In the Old Norse religious beliefs, the self was divided in many parts, such as the hamre, our physical appearance, our shape, the hugre, a sort of consciousness or thought, the filgia, a spiritual entity bound to us, or many filgur, uh, could be helping spirits, animal helpers, ancestors, etc. The migin, our force, essence, which, which we can place in something, objects, it will influence others and of ourselves and can be given to the gods as a gift. The hemingia, which is luck, but not in the abstract sense, it's a sort of force, almost like the migin, which can be influenced to our own benefit and can be inherited. It was believed that people's souls consisted of a part inherited by their parents and ancestors, which would be passed down through heritage. And the part was influenced and created through the person's own actions throughout one's lifetime. This is different from the concept of karma, in that there isn't necessarily the idea of good and bad. The things you tend to do will tend to happen to you. Part of the herlog is inherited. It is believed to have been passed down through your ancestors. The majority of this inherited herlog would come from your parents. This part of the herlog will also be passed down from you to your children. In a way, part of our herlog has already been made and is given to us. This is the part of the destiny that can't be changed, can't be altered. You can't change the past lives of your ancestors and part of what they have done, part of themselves, is in you. And you are a direct part of the spiritual self of your parents, a sort of materialized piece of their own spirits. This is what you can't change in your destiny and most of our current situations have been inherited. But we can change the way we emotionally respond to the past and we can behave differently in the present to try to change the future. Just because one of your ancestors took one specific path, you don't have to take it. So weird, destiny, is the general web representing our fate. It consists in the junction of your life thread and the life threads of others, bound to create a tapestry which connects us all to the natural world and the universe. As such, the weird can't be altered. The Urlog, on the other hand, are the threads of destiny and layers of threads which make this web of destiny possible. It's what you can change if it's possible. It's your emotional responses, your actions and behaviors, and it's what will add layers of threads to the tapestry of fate. Everything is interconnected in this way, making both Urlog and Weird essential to each other. This concept of a part of your being inherited shows the importance of family in these types of beliefs and practices. The importance of the community, the importance of those you come in contact with in any way. The consequences of your actions, or any other person's actions, directly or indirectly connected to your life, will affect the fate of each individual. Doing something which is undesirable will affect the rest of your family in a negative way, or something admissible will have a positive effect in your family. The part of the Urlog that is determined by you is constructed by the actions and behaviors you have shown throughout your life. Remember that nothing that you do can change the past. You can repent, sure, but that changes nothing. Of the past. Fate isn't totally fixed, but the past is, and the past is also destiny, because what happened is already affecting the outcome of your destiny. But sufficient actions that are considered right can create a balance. Even if the wrong actions will always be there, the right actions will make a balance. There is no true concept of good, bad, um, right, wrong in Old Norse beliefs. There aren't rules or divine laws, commandments of the things you do that are considered bad or good. Everything you do is decided through your actions. 
What determines good, bad, right, wrong are actions and behaviors and emotional responses that make you who you are and who you want to be. There aren't restrictions for your actions and that, that is what gives you freedom in your destiny. You can act the way you want, the way it seems best to you, but you have to take in mind that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. There will always be consequences and those consequences shape the outcome of your fate. To understand destiny, we should also understand the concept of the Nornir, the Norns, the Norse goddesses of fate. Their names derive from forms of the verb to be. Hurdr, the old woman whose name is also the name of the well of destiny by the roots of Yggdrasil, derives from the prefix hur that indicates the origin of something, can be understood as that which was. This norm governs the past events which dictate future events. Verdandi, the lady whose name can be understood as that which is. She governs the constant change of the present. And Skuld, the youngest. The name can be understood as shall be, will become, and she governs the possibilities that gradually take shape according to the actions of the present. Another function attributed to these goddesses is to repair the damage done to the roots of Yggdrasil by the dragon Nidhogr, using the water of the well of Urdr, but more of that further ahead. Analyzing the first term of the word Urlog, we have the prefix Ur, ne uh, next to the word Log, which is law, resulting in something like primal law which in turn consists of a greater law that the Nornir are only servants of and not those who determine it. Hence, whole beings of all worlds, even the gods, are subjected to the Herlog. It can be understood as primal layers of actions and circumstances that are in the past, but they have determined the present. As I've said, destiny is created by the many layers of the Herlog. The first layer of the Herlog we are subjected to is the place and circumstances of our birth and our family. These external realities are beyond our control and are crucial for the shaping of our fate. But I continue to reinforce every action and choice we make also becomes part of our Urlog. Weird is like a web with strings dictated by the Urlog, controlling the relation of cause and effect. Whenever we take action, a chain of consequences that cannot be prevented is triggered. So many events are inevitable, and by the nature of the web of weird, such events can affect not only us, but also people to whom we are attached. The Nornir, as the goddesses who weave and spin the fate, remind us that we are the masters of our own destiny, for no matter how much they know about the weird, they can only follow what is dictated by the Urlog. Our acts behave like threads, inter intertwining and intermingling, defining the design of the complex tapestry in which our life is reflected. Therefore, the present can be understood as the result of the connection between the weird and the Urlog. The consequences of our actions become our Log, and restrict us to a certain reality provoked by ourselves, but our present actions will unfold in our weird. Maybe it might be quite hard for us nowadays to understand the concept of weird because we have created a concept of time quite different from the one of Northern European pagans. For us time is a linear process, a beginning with an end and events in between. Time is an illusion, there is no time, not really. There is just this constant present situation. We live eternally in the present and we are not living in the past and why worry with the future if we are not in it? We are constantly in the present, but we can relieve past events if we choose to take our mind to the past and leave it in our head. Or we can imagine ourselves in the future and create an image of the future. And this entire mind process breaks our modern concept of time, breaks this linear progress of life.
if time is not considered or experienced in a linear fashion, but instead is understood as a series of interconnected events, each affecting the other. Fate becomes not a destination with a beginning and an end, but a crossroads. Just as the traveler affects the outcome of his journey by the path, he chooses, so do we play an active role in facing what weird represents to us. What you do as an individual can change the weird. In the crossroads you can take a path, you can turn back, you can choose another path and meet people in this path which might lead you to other paths. This is what life was to our Norse pagan ancestors, not a fixed straight line, but a crossroads with multiple possibilities and destinations, within other crossroads. I know it's hard to understand this, even for me it's hard to break certain concepts we have lived with our entire lives. Consider time not as a river rapidly flowing, taking us further away from our births and dragging us into our deaths, but rather as a lake of infinite size. Throw a stone into the lake, let other people do the same. This creates ripples, undulating impressions in the water that spread, touch and overlap each other. Each stone is different from the other. They can be large or small and create large or small ripples, but each stone creates an impression on the surface of the water. The stones represent our actions, uh, actions, but we were the ones to throw the stones. We were the ones creating those ripples in the weird, and our ripples are affected and will affect others. Our ripples are the urlog. You cannot change the way those ripples behave once they are created, but you can change the size of the stones. Everyone is throwing stones into the lake and the ripples are never the same, but at some point are connected and we live in this timeless lake of actions and consequences, always changing our own life and the lives of others. Sorry if this sounds like the Norse concept of fate for dummies, but sometimes to understand the complexity of something, we must create an image of realities people are familiar with. Uh, if we continue to explain something already complex in nature with more complex concepts, we will never change the way we see the universe itself, and we will remain chained to the concepts others gave us. It's important to set our minds free from preconceived ideas. I didn't choose at random the previous example of the lake and the stones and the water ripples. As I've said before, one of the tasks of the Norns is to water the world tree Yggdrasil with the waters from the Well of Urdr, the Well of Destiny. Yggdrasil is a tree that stands at the center of the cosmos and holds the nine cosmic worlds, giving us the impression that it sustains life and somehow every living creature is connected to this cosmic axis. The great tree grows from the well of Urdr. The waters of the well nourish the tree, whose evergreen leaves shed dew drops into the well. We have the representation of a water cycle in here. The water nourishes the tree and in turn the tree gives it back. This expresses a circular passage of time. The well corresponds to the past, influencing the growth of the tree, which corresponds to the present. But there is no immediate perception of the future in here. This goes against our modern linear conception of time. Yggdrasil and the well represent the past, influencing the present, and the present then returns to the past and on it goes. To the Norse there wasn't this linear concept of time with a beginning and an end, but a cycle, a continuation, going in circles, much like the myth of Ragnarok. Ragnarok isn't the end, it's just the final stage of a cycle, a terrible necessity to go back to the past and start it all over again. After Ragnarok, everything is destroyed to create new life, a new cosmos and a new cycle of life, just to end again in chaos and begin the cycle once more. The primal law is the work of the Norns, the earliest form of the destinies of all living beings, but not their only possible form. 
the fates produced by the Norns are not necessarily absolute. The present also influences the past and vice versa. Having been written can be rewritten. All beings who are subject to destiny have some degree of power over their own destiny and the destiny of others. Alright my dear friends, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. All the links to my social media are down below at the description. Well, once again, thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video and as always, Tá curioso?